Hello and welcome to another episode of the Digital Painter Vidcast. My name is Terry Dana Jakimiak II, and I am the Digital Painter. All right, so this week we are actually coming back to a program that I introduced several months ago called Paintstorm Studio. They've had a recent update, so I thought it would be a good time to go back and explore it and look to see what it is that they updated this time around. So let's pull around their change log. And now it's, like I said, it's been a while. So this was most recently updated on March 1st, 2016. Uh, and before that, actually, February 7th, 2016, it was updated as well. Uh, but apparently, there is a new ruler feature added. Now, this is going to be fabulous for those of us that do things that require uh, parallel lines, as you can see here, two-point perspective, three-point perspective. You know, as a theater designer, I'm also, also mm, oftentimes designing in perspective. Uh, there's a global pen pressure hardness feature. I don't know. I haven't played with it yet. Uh, the ability to merge all lower layers to one new, which is kind of like when you merge all layers into a new in Photoshop. The ability to apply mask added, which is nice. Um, a, a bug, rename brush item added, uh, free transform option moved, and uh, a new interface language added French. So, hey, if you're French, you now have a new language that you can work with, and it's French. I know it's crazy, right? All right, so let's uh, let's go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and reduce this. Now, one of the problems I had been having in Paintstorm Studio is that it was kind of being futzy with my pen, and you can see there, there's a bit of lag. But then, once I put my pen down, the lag's gone. So it's <laughs> again, this is really odd stuff with the program. Uh, I haven't played with it in a while, so I'm going to have to come in and see. Here's the classic transparency, one of my favorite build-up pens for this. Okay. Um, so let's, again, real quick. Now, the big ones for me are the new ruler feature added. So let's see if we can find that. Like, I'm doing this with you. Me and you, we're together on this one. And I did, there we go. Okay, so a new ruler. What's this? <gasps> there it is. Okay. Okay, it's not matching to the ruler yet, so how do we... Oh, that's the reset. Oh, we see the grid. Oh, there's the ruler. Two point perspective. Whoa! There we go. Okay, let me clear this layer. Let me add a new layer. So, right now we're in two point perspective. So, depending on where I draw, okay, that's kind of nice. Now, I work a lot in two point perspective in theater. So, the ability, let me switch to kind of a brush. So if you don't know what perspective is, essentially what it is, it is this uh, idea that, or not idea, this truth, that everything <clears throat> goes off to these vanishing points, okay? So if you imagine yourself standing on a road in the middle of the Midwest, and you're standing right in the middle, and you'll see that road come to a vanishing point in the middle, okay? And so right now we're on two-point perspective, which means there's two vanishing points. You'll see one right here. So if I um, okay, that locks it. So there's one right here, and there's another one right here. Okay. So everything goes to those vanishing points right now. See that? Oops unless you're going straight up and down, okay? If you're going true vertical or horizontal, it just goes straight up and down. But any type of angle goes into that vanishing point, okay? Um, 
so the ability to use that to create true perspective is actually really nice. And now the fact that there's a three-point perspective, let's go ahead and turn this layer off, add a new layer. Look at that. So now there's three points you can fall into. Okay. Now, what is odd is that that is under a different menu than your single point perspective, which is, which apparently doesn't want to, single point perspective doesn't feel like it wants to work right now. Oh, we don't want to turn that. There we go. Oops, which apparently I've, oops, let's turn that off and add another layer. Okay, turn those off. Now, they've also given us a ruler, which is kind of nice, to do straight lines. And then we can grab, we can actually rotate that ruler. And anywhere, it'll follow that. So if I turn it now here, it's going to follow that path. See that? Uh, I'm a big fan of rulers. I like the ruler tool in art. Uh, the ruler tool in Art Rage. I think it's fabulous. Uh, so I, you know, I kind of sometimes get a little frustrated with Photoshop that there's no true ruler tool in that that I can find. Um, but this is nice. Being able to use a ruler and very easily be able to adjust it. Corel Painter has a wonderful ruler tool along with perspective tools, so it's good to be able to see this kind of stuff uh, being made readily available, especially in this program because it is so cheap. Okay. Now, one of the things that it said, turn that back on, is the ability to merge all lower layers to the new one. So. Let's see. Merge lower layers into the new one. Ah, yes, it does. Awesome. Okay. So what this does, let me, I'm actually going to delete that. So we have this layer here now, and I've got all layers turned on. If we come in, And if it allows me to right click, there we go. And we turn off all the other layers. So it's taken every layer that was visible, this is important, every layer that was visible and merged it into a new layer. This is great if you're working, you know, multiple layers on your rendering on your art piece and you decide you want to see, you know, what's it going to look like all together. You go ahead, you merge it and boom, you can see it as a single layer, okay? Nothing else is on. Now, I'm curious. One of the things that I found is when you do something like that, sometimes your adjustments that occur within a layer don't necessarily do exactly what you want. And what I mean by that is, I'm gonna, we're gonna start over, do a new layer. Let me grab this, grab a color, let's go with that. Just gonna lay a bunch of this in right now. Okay, then we add a new layer, but we're gonna make it an overlay layer. So now this is where I get curious. This layer is an overlay layer. And see, that's the problem with this. So if you have anything uh, that is not a standard layer. I'm curious if I do a new layer. Yeah, it removes it removes the adjustment, the type of layer it is. So, for example, this is uh, like I said, this is an overlay layer right now. Okay, so when I paint, the stuff that only shows up is overlaid. Okay, uh, one of the things. Let's see. Yeah, unfortunately, 
That's one of the downsides to merging your layers is that if you do things like overlay or screen, which I'm often doing when I'm doing my drawings, uh, you can't combine them in such a way uh, unless you like export it as a JPEG or something similar to that. You can't combine it within its own layer. It just doesn't work, which can be really frustrating you know, as an artist uh, because there are times that I just want to combine it all in one layer. I just want to see what it looks like. Okay, so there are a couple of the new things in Paintstorm Studio. Again, the ruler um, with the parallel lines, ellipse. Now, I'm in, I didn't look at the ellipse. Let's look at the uh, ellipse. Oh, interesting. And you can make it funky. Um, need to be on a new layer. Let's get a color like this. Oh, there we go. Ah, <laughs> that's fun. You can come in and bring... All right, so there's ellipses. And then again, there's the two-point perspective and the three-point perspective. So uh, all those are new. Let me jump back here. Global pen pressure hardness feature added to the menu file options. Let's take a look at that. Uh, options. Go, go. Ah, so essentially what you can do is you can create a global pen pressure for all of your brush, uh, all the brushes that you use. I, I, don't, I don't think I'm going to find that all that useful. So for me, that's going to stay as is. Uh, the ability to apply mask added. Well, and that should have always been there, right? So if you're working, let's turn that off. And we've added a mask. There we go. I'll start to re do some of my masking here. So I've masked off a bunch of stuff. And then what they're saying is you should be able to apply the mask. Doesn't seem to do anything, unfortunately. Hmm. I don't know. Oh, there we go. I guess I just had to click it enough times. So now the mask is applied. Okay, so the mask is no longer visible over here. So let me turn off a bunch of these again. We will try it with a brand new layer. If we come in, let's undo that because that color is no good. Let's go with this. little robot here make big ears decide later on we'll do a little bit of masking on this layer let's get rid of that part of the ear and get rid of that part of the ear and now what we should be able to do is apply a mask See, and this is, huh. Ah, okay, so we learned something new in here. I'm gonna undo that. So to apply the mask, you can't just hover over, hover over the layer area and right click. You actually have to hover over the mask itself and apply mask. And that's how it works. Okay, so to fully apply the mask, you actually have to hover over the mask itself. So just remember that if you're going to be applying a mask. Interesting. Um, a couple of the other things are not really, like I said, unless you're French. I don't know much French. Like literally, je suis la nana. That is the extent. Oh no, I know. Comment allez-vous? 
I, I've, that, that's it. I'm done with French. Okay, so, but if, if you speak French, there's a new interface language added. Um, and then some movements of things. So nothing other uh, than, but the, again, the big things here are the combi combining of uh, layers, you know, at, combining all the layers below into a single layer. That's really cool. And again, this ruler and perspective setup, which I think they've done really nice. It's real easy to get to. You know, you switch to, to ruler. Very simple to move about. I'm on the mask right now. There we go. <laughs> Some of the masked areas there. And there we go. So the rulers, I think, are going to, you know, if you do anything that is technical drawing based or, um, you know, you like sharp, hard, crisp lines, then I think the rulers are going to be really quite lovely. You'll have to play with it a little bit. So the lock. Well, one would think that it would lock things, but it doesn't. <laughs> What's that lock do? Let's see. Oh, OK. So that's what, oh, this links. That's a link, not a lock. Oops. So you can lock it in place. So now it's not movable. Um, you can, you know, obviously draw along that same, but you can't move it around. So we unlock it, and that allows us to move it. That's the reset button. You can adjust the guide's opacity so it's not quite as blatant. I don't know what we're linking it to, but... All right. Well, that's it for this week on the Digital Painter vidcasts. Uh, this was a request. Somebody had seen that there was an update, so I thought, hey, let's go ahead and look at it. Uh, actually, it's got me interested in coming back and playing with PaintStorm Studio again. Again, part of that reason is because it's cheap. Uh, it doesn't cost a lot of money. The pencils are all right. Oops, let's grab. Mm, I don't like that one. Let's see this. OK, that's not too bad. Uh, so, there we go. Of course, I might be, let's do a new file. I'm at 2100 by 1500. Oh, that's not too bad. Uh, oh, look at that. Lots of different sizes in here. Retina, 4K, two times full HD. Well, that's kind of nice. Cancel. All right. So that's it. I hope you are having a wonderful week. I'm uh, very happy for your support. If you've liked my video, go ahead, hit subscribe. If you don't like my video, feel free to comment. Tell me what you don't like. I am more than happy to respond. I like responding to people, whether it's good, bad, or indifferent. You know, I'm a little slow sometimes, but I do enjoy chit-chatting with you. And I release these videos every Friday. This is uh, something I've been doing for quite some time. If you haven't already, check out thedigitalpainter.com. That's my home site there. Uh, I post all my videos there. We have some membership things there, uh, hoping to expand. I've got some ideas moving forward, but we'll see. Uh, we'll see how responses are to things. And uh, I'm just happy to see that people are out there doing art. So, uh, so if you've got anything to share, make sure you link it in the comments. And thanks so much. Take care. Thank you.